So, oh, okay. <laughs> so today is June 3rd, 2021. My name is Maria Saldana and I'm here with Gija. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much yeah. for accepting this project. Um, all right. So can you start by telling me when and where you were born? Um, I was born in Montreal. My mother um, on a hot summer a season in July uh, in 85, 14th of July, 85. And uh, my mom's Peruvian and my father's Spanish. They're both migrated here and met here in Montreal. I have an older sister, 10 years older than me and with kids and a family and um, an older brother also with kids, family and everything. And the last one, no kids, <laughs> family coming from everywhere and like a different form of family, more into like queer LGBT, like house family. <laughs> yeah. So it's a different. Um, so yeah, I was born here. My mother is, got me, I came when she was 43. So, and my father was eight years younger. So yeah, so that's... Uh, here in Montreal, in the north of, uh, complete north of America. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Um, and so, okay, so your mother's Peruvian, your dad's Spanish, you have old, two older siblings. Um, and so you, you were born in Montreal. Is that where you grew up? Yes, born and raised in Montreal, um, more with my um, Peruvian family. I don't have a lot of uh, uh, Spanish families, so it was much more like, well, not much more. It was only with my Peruvian family. Mm -hmm. And um, so once um, my mother started to migrate through like close family members also, like there was more migration and more people that were uh, coming up north and also like going back. Some went back mm -hmm. and some went back like generations after. So, and I'm still here. I don't know why this is making me stay here. Like it's so cold sometimes and I'm like, what the fuck? But um, yeah, I, like I'm young. So I, I think I, I was born and raised here, but I need like to culture jam. Like I have to culture jam. If I'm not culture jamming, I feel isolated as like, especially as a Peruvian here on the, on, like up north, it seems like it's, it's much more like families regrouping. And so it's, yeah, sometimes it's isolating, but that helps me as a queer Peruvian, like, and also anti-colonialist and anti-capitalist, like there's like other levels also. So I connect much more with like the, um, my, um, my ketchup roots are becoming much more intriguing yeah. with the colonial parts that I'm learning bit by bit and connecting with my family parts mm -hmm. because family stories are not all told, you know, like from other generations. My mom now is 79. So just by my grandmother, there was a whole other story, you know, and with traumas that were not necessarily like spoken. Mm -hmm. So I have to like try to see how to connect. So here I grasp my roots, maybe like for with the with indigenous people. Okay. Uh, I'm don't consider myself as an indigenous of the north people, northern people, but um, I do consider myself as a keeper of that their knowledges, right? Like I, I have a responsibility with that to be able like to uphold knowing like what it feels like to uphold like a, a safer space when 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 I'm invited to those uh, to those places. So yeah, those roots are a bit 
learning every day. Like, <laughs> dramáticas. Estoy como, what the fuck drama is happening in my family? And then I'm like, oh, so now I get it. <laughs> you know, I'm like, what the fuck? Now I get it. I'm not going to uphold that. Like, this generation thing is like, cut. <laughs> so, yeah. So I'm, I'm in those... Uh, a bit of a wave like where do I go do I stay here do I go when I meet another culture um in culture I mean like the um, they have other um references okay. so um when they have like other references to like words or doings or cookings or stuff like that For me, it's like another culture because it's not something that I refer to as like my home space, right? So, yeah, so when I get to like share those spaces, I'm like, okay, well, I feel well. Like, I don't have that need to like go back into my home space. So, but I do want to go back to Peru, that's for sure. Can't wait. I miss it. The smell, there's something, the waters, the. Las montañas and la selva and yeah. las cordilleras. There's a smell. There's something and like brings back so many memories of when I was young and my family was coming like migrating here and I just smelled them and I was like, this is Peru, Jean. Come, this is like tierra. Come. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I miss it. So I have to. There's something. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Right. I, I resonate, um, with a lot of what, of what you shared. Um, and, and thank you for, for honoring and naming, you know, your Quechua roots, um, and, and what that process looks like, because, you know, I, I'm indigenous from La Selva and that, even even thinking about indigeneity, I think is so difficult when you are not in the, the place that you're <laughs> from. Um, and so I think I think that you touched on that a little bit, right? What it means to hold um, that that knowledge um, and, and feel a responsibility to it. Um, And, and yes, there's something so special about going back to Peru. Like you said, there's, there's a smell, there's a feeling that I don't think that you can really, really capture, you know, anywhere else. And have you, did you go back? Do you go back to have families that do? I mean, yes, so I, I do go back. I have, um, both my parents are from La Selva. Um, yeah. And so I, I was born there. I feel very connected there. Even though I was raised, you know, in, in Miami. Um, so it's, it's interesting for me. I, I've gotten to go back, but, you know, the pandemic has made it difficult. Same. I, I miss my abuelita. Um, oh, she's there? Yeah, so my, almost, almost my entire family is. is oh, okay. So you're the like uh, first. Is it? Do you say a first generation that migrated? Um, I think so. I, I, know. Mean, I would think so because I, I mean, I, I migrated with with my my mom, right? Um, okay, so so, so you have the okay. Yeah, and so my siblings were were born um, in in Florida, and so for them it's a little bit different. I feel I think a little bit close, like more connected to Peru in that sense. Um, and, yes, there is a difference. Yeah, yeah. Sí. Um, but you shared um, that, that your your mom is Peruvian. What where where in Peru is your is your mom from? Uh, my mom's from uh, Lima and Caras, um, Caras Huaraz, from that part, and Ancash. And uh, uh, yeah, so my grandmother uh, was from Caras, and they migrated, like, within the, and they moved to Lima, which was not the same, because when they moved in those years, which is, like, nine. 1940s, um, completely different 
like map, you know, from the city because there was like agriculture in the city. They had like place to like have animals and to have like their own food production and everything for the household and for the neighbors. Mm -hmm. Which now when we go back, I did one trip with my mom and she was like, this is not, she, she, I felt, that's my personal thing, that there was like a disconnect for her. Because when she went back, she did not recognize the city anymore. And she was like, these were just like tierras, chakras y chakras. And she was like, and like, there was so many animals here and we were sharing our food and even like stealing, the neighbors were stealing each other's chickens and stuff like that. <laughs> I'm like, okay. And she's the one telling me not to steal anyways. <laughs> like whatever. Um, but yeah, and there was like a feeling that she became a stranger to her own like city. Mm -hmm. So now when I tell her, like do you want to go back or stuff like that she's like well maybe to go visit tell like um to tia because she, we still have um she still has uh, um brothers and sisters there mm -hmm. um and it's not like and her friends obviously like friends that she has still from like 11, 12, 13 years old. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm like, that's a sister. When you're <laughs> just yeah. a friend, you know, like it becomes family. But anyway, and um, yeah, she's, every time she refers to going back, it's more like just to visit like her, like um, relationship ties, but not, she doesn't refer to La Tierra or like her old neighborhood. She doesn't identify to like the, the, the place. It's more like just now the people, mm -hmm. which for me, I'm like, well, I want to know more. Like, tell me, show me and everything. And when we went to Caras, when I did a trip with her, and it's funny because it was at the time where I was having this huge conflict of like leaving my ex-boyfriend and everything. And he also like, I think that, <laughs> and then, like, he was like when you're gonna come back you're gonna leave me I'm like well you should have thought of that before <laughs> like I'm going on a trip with my mom <laughs> and um but yeah it was great because I wanted to go to my roots and when we were there I was like well let's go to Caras you know, like I've heard so much about this place mm -hmm. through like La Boela y La Nonita and everything so I was like so many stories like fucked up stories also because the patriarchy from those days like she was born in 19 1912 or 19 come in those uh in those years which is completely different you know like so like one one of her uh uncles was like working at a local school there and in those days, well, the colonialism was like another level, right? And everything. But she didn't go to school. She was working in La Tierra with other indigenous women. Because when I, um, when I, like, she spoke Quechua. So that's why when she was here, she was always like saying words when she was seeing white men. <laughs> and I was like, I don't think that's a good word, but I'll keep it in mind, you know? <laughs> and um, so, yeah, so... When, when she was um, like he, um, in her uncle was uh, working at the school, but she was working in La Tierra with the other indigenous women that were there, right? So it, then with the names after the years and everything, I'm like, yeah, but that was used to like, when they say they family name, it's because they were like owners of those indigenous people. And so mm -hmm. like how, what happened with the like the unknown stories parts after that because she wasn't really interested to, into going to Caras where she like knows and like she did trips and everything but I was like no I want to go like show me so there was like this disconnect with that tierra but at the same time I was like well there might be stories that she doesn't even know herself but through arts um, I'm able like to repuzzle it a bit because like my grandmother was like a really bad bitch.
bitch. Like she, like there was something that she was always looking into, like having like to stand up for herself. In those days, she had like three husbands. So like in Peru, if you have like different husbands, many childs from different husbands at the same time, you get judged, especially if you're coming from Caras, right? <laughs> so I was like, there's something behind it, which when I talked to my mom, she's like, no, no, it's normal. Like, doesn't want to talk about it, doesn't want to give the details about it. So I'm like, okay, so I'll respect that. But there's something beyond it that's like, feel like, there's a connection with like the the people that made her make her safer, but not necessarily la tierra, which is like the opposite of it for me, right? Because like family should be always being in a safer space, and la tierra, well, like there comes the food and everything. So for me, and the language and the the just yeah, the grounding, the resourcing, and everything. So, yeah, I think for her, there's a lot of, uh, like, there's no, I'm like one of the first generations with other cousins here that went to university, but we're very few, we're not even five. So in my family, it's really like either you barely finished um, secundaria or you're like in academia. So it's like a big clash at the same time. So sometimes to come back together, we really have to like, the the parties are, are sweet, but then you hear like uncles, no, but it'll go, yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> like super like screaming and everything. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> so that's but that's a Latino family for me. Like if you're not screaming at one point in the party, it's not a party. <laughs> so I'm like, there comes the point where somebody's like, nah. that's how you know. <laughs> um but yeah, I see like like for me, it's like at the same time sad because instead of confirming, you know, like the history of our family, I always have to be in this limbo part. So I'm like, I guess that's okay. Like to see it in a feminist perspective also, like to just let things go, but to like own, like still your, um, you no? Know? Like, um, went through a lot and like it's um it's an honor to be able to like continue the good aspects but the the most harmful ones to be able to transform it you know mm -hmm. because obviously with like yeah so with the names I was just like this is like a name which like my mother was like no it's just normal that's how it goes like it was this or they come in I was like a bit like fucked up you know like my mom also told me when we were on a trip over there like she never went to Cusco when she was living there mm -hmm. and it was once we went back to visit that she visited Cusco so it's like how distance wants you to like get closer sometimes like in a different way and you try to find like any way but at the same time, I feel that it affects also the emotional and intelligence part. Like, I think sometimes it's like, sometimes she's like, oh, I don't care. But like, you see that she reacts, she overly reacts for something that's like, why are you reacting for that? You know? <laughs> so it's like, yeah, it's very like, I think that's the best thing to do like, well, personally, I felt so grounding to do like a, a trip with my mom. Like at the same time, you're like, fuck this. Now I know like what, like when I'm doing something that's identical to her and I'm like, oh, no, I don't like this and I'm reproducing it. But then like, there's like <laughs> something else that's like, okay, I get it now. Like it's more, helps you heal my own. Own, like traumas or my own difficulties that I had that like she couldn't um at that time like um be there let's say but afterwards I'm like okay well it's like uh, yeah 
it's difficult to to knit the the rest mm -hmm. being in another side of the continent because I don't want to lose it because still when I go to school or when I go out like there's a lot a lot of Mexicanos like, the community of Mexicanos are really super calm. they're organized they're there they're like they, they're like at the front lines a bit you know because mm -hmm. you're not Peruvian you're always going to be seen as oh you're Mexican and I'm like no fucker I'm not Mexican <laughs> you know like <laughs> <laughs> so they like the Mexican community like upholds like the front of like the whole America America Latina no so they're like really really tough they're not easy they're like they're gonna be like si no te quebramos no has pasado el test Jaco. you have to if you want to be at that front then you have to like tough it out you know <laughs> so, um, so that like a big props for the Mexican community here in Montreal. Um, and, uh, um, but yeah, it's, it's difficult because for me, since I grew up, when you grow up or you're just like with your habits and your everyday life with uh, Peruvian uh, references, well, even with Mexicanos or like uh, Salvadorenos, Hondureños or whatever, like you still have expressions and stuff like that that are like different and it's okay no it's just like clashes where you have to explain sometimes because one word will be an insult for somebody but another word would be um a good thing right but it's difficult because i mean to this community where we all like stand together from america from latin america But at the same time, I was not, I did not migrate. You know, people surrounding me are migrants, have went through a different orderly process than I did. So it's like how to, I still, like maybe I've become accustomed to like um, the, the, the culture here, North American culture, but I, when I'm in North American, cult, like French or English cultures, I'm like, I, I have difficulty, you know, I'm like, I, that's not my reference. Like, that's not my sole reference. I'm like, always like changing every single time that I'm trying to knit with my own um, roots. So it's, I don't know how you see it also, like, since you're, you're, the one that like migrated and everything. I don't know, like, especially like, will you come have children or you like, is it something or just like a little brother or little sister or stuff like that, that you, that you see like, or you, how you feel that rooting or transformation of identity. I don't know. You know, um... I I think that I I share with you and that um, you touched a bit on like the generational differences, right? Like you when you went back to to Peru with your mom, um, there were reactions that she had that maybe like made you want to ask more questions, and it was okay. almost like you know like leave it like, um, and so I think I I recognize those responses in my own family. Um, as oh. Especially, I think that when when it comes to indigeneity, um, because I have a, a great 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 grandmother who who was a Quechua woman who taught my my great grandmother my mama Deeth like how to be this woman right because it was true right the the ways that that um, colonization had shaped the patriarchy in Peru was so different at that time that my right I also consider my my great grandmothers bad bitches right because they <laughs> were the matriarch of the family and they they ran the family they ran the town that they were in pretty much right um and so I I hear similarities in in those stories um and and also it's I mean, I think that you you also touched on on what the, the like you're knitting, right? You're knitting yeah. these roots, and sometimes um, you don't have the answers, and so then, you know, um, 
you know, I'm curious because like, how do you then like for you, right? How do you maintain your relationship with Peru or with your Peruvian identity, right? Like when you're knitting, what, what comes up for you? Dance. Dance? It's really dance, yeah. The most traditional uh, form of like moving that is something that everybody shares. Like everybody, wherever I would go, like I know that if they put una wailas, well, we all know like what would be the wailas steps, right? And for me, like um, to dance, let's say another um, culture also form of dance, it's like, well, I don't know if I'm ready. Like, I think there's a process that I need to go through before I start repeating the same movements as you. So for me, it's very sacred. And I have cousins that started like um, the first cousins that migrated here. Uh, and then my mom came afterwards and everything through contacts. Um, they started, there are three sisters and um, they started uh, dancing this folkloric uh, dance troupe and they continued the the troupe like through generations because it was my cousins their children uh, then like broader family like me and like the whole Peruvian community that also like uh, invites people from El Salvador, Cubanos, Dominicanos, like there's people from uh, uh, Aisianos also that were like dancing there and everything. So it brings like people to the root of like the dance forms, right? That are um, passed down like through school and it's a never a right. It's like they're small of like four or five years old and they already know how to dance. And I'm like, damn, they dance better than me. And I feel like, eh, 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 eh. but um, yeah. And here you don't, uh, through school, there is no dancing. Right. So you have to learn like outside of school, which like in Peru, it's like, no, you have to like at least know like basic steps of what is our traditional dances here, right? the culture like indigenous afro peruvian like you have to but here like no so everybody's like well white man can't dance obviously not like you need, like what the fuck <laughs> you have to like learn outside but like if there was like a different part of interest like i think everybody can dance it's just the question of letting go right but for me yeah that's that's what connected me back like to my family to the things that were not said that I was young and the family separated and everything. So like I took the initiative to go back into it and I was like, I don't know where this goes, but right now I need to dance. Like I need to like, just like, I started dancing really, like I dance everywhere since I'm young, right? But the Peruvian dances to be more grounded to the, porque es mucho golpe tierra, right? Also, so to be more grounded to those roots that are like another generation and also like completely opposite side of the world. Well, North, South. Um, well, for me, it's really important like to do so. And it was after the, um, the trip with my mom, the separation with my ex. So I was like, okay, I'm going back into my family like here that's already like present and I don't, care which ways it was just like I just want to dance like if there's like, whatever happens happens but like I need to like go back to that and it brought me like to other Peruvians also that like migrated and yeah I think basically everybody migrated there I was just like one of those that did not that was born here so that's why I think they always picked on me <laughs> because now there's some girls that are pregnant and have kids and now they're so sweet with me you know I'm like don't worry like it's okay I get it like but there was something that when I say that I was Peruvian they were like no you're not Peruvian because I didn't go through the process of migrating of knowing the earth of knowing the smell of growing up with that so I get it when I was just like 
but I am Peruvian. Like my mom, you're disrespecting my mom, you know? <laughs> but now I totally get, and there's no, there's no harm done or whatever. Now we just dance together and like they're beautiful children. And it's important to stay connected because like the household habits is still the reference, the first reference that like these children are also going to continue passing on. And I don't want them to go through what I'd go, what, what I went through, you know, like it's difficult to be surrounded sometimes by people that are not used to like our food, which is more like, it's not the fancy food, it's buffet, la carapulcra, el mondongo, son cosas que como para gente puede ser como, ah, que es eso, que asqueroso, ah, corazón de res, anticuchos, ah, oh, it's much like uh, you eat the heart and just come, this is filet mignon, bitch. Like, you <laughs> <dry it. laughs> like, <laughs> like you're disrespecting our, like, what we need to survive and to, like, keep alive. So, like, do you really actually know what you're disrespecting? <laughs> like, so, yeah, I don't want them to go through that. I want them, like, to be, like, you're still Peruvian. There is to know your differences and to accept with humility those differences and to be able to continue to be at that front, to be able like to say, well, I have the opportunity of so many languages when other people that just arrived here struggle with that, you know, and get ripped off so much. Like even within our culture, sometimes we get ripped off, right? It's like survival mode. So I'm like, you know what, like whatever happens, like these children need to be grounded. And not that I had all the like, beatings from everywhere I'm good <laughs> I'll be the bad bitch to tell them okay now you have to learn how to fight <laughs> because it's true like it's it's just a yeah it's a I really love that experience because dancing together since it's uh like I only have the reference of Peru Negro mm. and Warmi and stuff like that so we're like we're like tight right so we like mirror the images men women we do sometimes the role of men like to be to dance because sometimes they there wasn't enough men in the the troupe so we were like jamming also like oh no as a man you have to do this so like re, like reproducing and performing that so it was like super queerish and I don't think the girls knew like how queer they are because it was like well you were acting as if you had balls bitch so like, <laughs> remember that, <laughs> you know, like, so like, so yeah, there, there was something, there's something amazing. We had like, um, there's festivales peruanos para el 28 de, de julio. And there's many, so I don't know what the organizing things are that, oh, we're going to do it here. Oh no, we're a group of doing it. And anyways, there's many parties coming up the 28th of July. And there's many people dancing there and drinking and having fun. And that is so amazing. There's one that's um, Festival del Mundo. So it's all sorts like uh, America Latina, Africa, Asian. Like it's so much fun, that festival. And we had the opportunity to dance there. And there's artists coming from those countries. They que varian la cumbia, que estamos ahí con... And it's so fun. And you get to also like meet the people, the cooks, uh, because they have like small stands. Like it's on a small island here where it's like um, entertainment more, like parties and stuff like that shows. So, or in parks, like at the, uh, like parks more with the Peruvian community live. Uh, and so, yeah, we all meet there. And it's a culture jamming, like amazing. You meet new people. There's like no judgment. There's also like during the days, like fun drink. You meet the cooks, the new restaurants. You encourage them. You see like, like you see the diaspora, like coming alive and taking up space. Mm -hmm. And that is something that I will forever be grateful for to be to have to have access to be able to dance because it brought me to like into a whole world of like 
family, another type of family, which we all go through together. And it's, it's amazing. And I, oh, because of COVID, I miss it so much. So much fun. You spend your whole freaking day at the sun and like in the after hours, once like it, the performances are done, like it's a big old space to like just meet people and then <laughs> you, you, you meet people, that's for sure. <laughs> it's like the tinder space like everybody goes there people are staying there because there's too many people going into the like uh metro and stuff like that so it's really for everybody you know <laughs> families then at the end of the night you're like that's perfect i miss it so yeah dance dancing was like what rooted me and brought me back to love i guess yeah going back to love yeah oh, that's beautiful um yeah i i love how when you're talking about dance um i can see that it grounds you right but but i think that i i appreciated how you've said that dance in and of itself also grounds you to the earth right and it's so true yeah. that that a lot of the dances that we have in peru are are so much footwork right so much zapateo um it's so much jumping and and in paso tipicos like i'm even thinking about like dances in la selva it is it is so rooted to earth right yeah. connecting your your body to the earth but it connects you to something bigger than that right like our tierra um and it expands your generations and then i like I love hearing how um, you've seen it. You know, it sounds like your Peruvian identity is still very strong in the diaspora. Um, and I like that you were even naming, you know, the queering that happens in, in dance See? with, with you know, the, the roles that people take up because it is so true, right? And I think that from what I have seen, you know, I think in, in Peruvian culture and, and maybe we can argue in, in Latinx culture, there's, it's almost like dance grants us a space, especially for queer folks where queerness is acceptable in that moment, because I dance so many times with my amigas, right? Like, like women, other stuff. And it doesn't necessarily represent queerness, but like yeah. the rest of your familia is totally fine. If you're out there dancing a cumbia with, with a, another woman, right? In my, in my case, they, they would be fine seeing me dance with an amiga because it's dancing. Um, yeah, I think, I don't know if, if folks realize how queer that moment is, right? How queer the dance floor can be. Um, and so, yeah, thank you. Thank you for naming that. Um, and, you know, I, I think it brings me, it brings me to my next point, right? We're talking about your, your peruanidad, but, you know, what about your, your queer identity? Can you talk to me about that? Oh my God. <laughs> Since I had an older sister and an older brother, I did not refer to like gendered stereotypes because we were always like together and being ourselves and we were not never judging ourselves. Um, once I started going to school and even like my mom, she always like used to like dress me up and stuff like that. And I, I was looking at her pictures and I'm like, damn, I have a lot of like arcoiris all over the place. <laughs> so it's like, what happened to me? Maybe I, I like, instead of playing with Barbies or stuff like that, like I had Barbies, but like, since I had access to like the GI Joes or stuff like that, like from my brother, I was like creative because we were really poor. We were like three uh, in one bedroom. Uh, so like, we just, played with, with whatever we had like access to us so I was like super creative and I was like I'll play with the G.I. Joes and it wasn't about war it was about something else right it's just they had always the same position so I was like at the same time it's okay you know <laughs> it's like, so I guess that like brushed off the stereotypes um from a young age because I had access to do whatever I wanted to you know like my mom um, my dad wasn't really present because he was working a lot. My mom was more at home and I don't remember her being like, don't do this or don't do that, except when it came to sports. Because once I started, like it was 
those sports are for men, you know? So I was like, well, no, like, I want to play sports. So that affected a lot, but I still had the opportunity to play like at school or at the park, but not in the leagues, you know, like the small. So I was like the groupie. So I saw a lot because since my sister is like 10 years older, she was like already like pre, um, she was teen pre-adult, right? So I had more like my brother and his friends as references. And at school, I was like striving because I was playing so much sports and I like, I loved it. And I was really like, queer and I was always like why like wearing track pants like like really sporty like girl you know but like I didn't do my hair or like I was always like very natural which is like um uh tied up or stuff like that and when I look at the pictures I'm like okay I get it like when I was trying to look like my friends that were more girly I looked like shit because it was just not me you know <laughs> so it was like I get why like boys didn't like me and all of a sudden I have like when I was at my most natural parts um I had like these sports guys that were into me because like I was also playing sports and I didn't realize they were checking me because I was just like I want to play sports too and I was striving and I was good you know so it was kind of difficult but I didn't realize it till like I was 17 18 which is here the legal age is 18 when you can start going out and everything and also it's more like better seen when you move out I moved out from my house uh, from my mom because my dad passed away when I was 15 and since everybody grew and left um, well I was the main focus since she was always like taking care of I was like I grew up basically alone so I went through all these processes like instinctively and once he passed away well she continued in the same rhythm of like taking care of so she put all the focus on I was like, no, 18 years old, I'm done. I'm like, I'm not staying here in this situation. Because <laughs> I was like, no. And, um, but yeah, I guess it's at that moment where I started going out and like going to, after sec uh, after secundaria, you have like, a, there's a like two or three years, depending on what you're studying in the CIGEP. And from there, you can continue at university. So it's so when I was in that part of the two, three years, which is basically between 16 to 19 years old, um, that's where I met new people because like you're not at your local secundaria, you're like at a much uh, broader space. And that's where I met like new like girls and everything. And I was like, oh, you're my new best friend. And it was so like, oh, you're my new best friend. So it's kind of queer lesbian. <laughs> so I guess that's why I understand sometimes some girls in some situations, I'm like, oh, I get it now. Because <laughs> um, I learned all about the queerness and everything more like when I was in academia lately, recently. So. For me, it wasn't like an issue. I always did like whatever I wanted, but I see the judgments, right? I see that I have more guys friends. I see that some like I'm I'm into like more boxing and fighting. The other girls are gonna be like, "Oh, you're my new best friend," but not because they want to chill and do some nails. It's because you know <laughs> they're like support us out. So I'm like, okay, sure, but support me too. Like, so yeah, I don't have like the same the same I don't know I like it though because like it's not the same like concerning like the queerness and like I love like a lot I had like girl partners women partners that had also babies and stuff like that and we there's like something different like it's another type of love also and like yeah, I don't know. I really like my queerness because I can do whatever I want and I really don't give a fuck. And I've had so many like harassment and violence against me and 
to gaslighting, so much gaslighting from the projections of like men that did not pass the test of the queerness, definitely not, that were so harmful. And I was like, I, like it, it got broken pieces of me. And it was difficult to say like, well, don't project onto me. And this was patriarchy coming from all over the world. It's not just the patriarchy from the North, right? So it was like from so many reference cultures and everything. So I'm like, this is so fucked up. So I guess my like lesbianism or more my queer my queerness has really brought me into like come in, into it, like a whole new perspective also of how to say like, girl, you do not have to accept this. Like, um, so, so I'm, but at the same time, like I, do get pissed also because I'm like, well, no, you can't do this. Like we have to decolonize a bit all of this, you know, because like the references are like normalized. Like for Peruvians, we're normalized with the machismo and everything. So when a queer person comes along, it's like, oh, she's in, uh, we say here in French, it's mal baisé, mm -hmm. which is, uh, she's wrongly fucked, you know, like, oh, she's just like, like Una, una chica mal pariada or something like that you know like and it's like no dude it's you are the fucking problem like leave me alone and yeah especially when you're in the streets and everything it's like a whole other like role but I love my queerness I may have gotten like um beaten down but that makes me that makes me into like refer to me to the lineage that I have because I do like think so much about like when my grandmother had to go through at those moments where she was like my dad didn't beat my mother but my grandmother had all her husbands beat her and she was like always like and she always had like these pictures where she was like just pissed you know she was not smiling you do not find a lot of pictures of my grandmother smiling yeah. and so when for me it's it, my queerness comes a lot from that love you know mm -hmm. like there is reasons why she was pissed and I get it because like when I'm going through which is different but always in the sense of like defending my communities or who I am because physically you are touching me but like at the end, since I'm like referring to like all my sisters and everything, I'm like, you're touching all of us at the same time. Because if you're doing that to me, you're doing that to so many others. And if you're harming me, mm -hmm. which I have like the resources and I have like the knowledge and everything of how to like analyze you, I can't imagine how you're affecting the other girls that may not have the same access to resources. So I guess my queerness is like in that sense, yes. If you're if you're not queer, like I do not want you around. Like for me, it's work. For me, it's like a matriarchal work, because it like to be queer is not only to reaffirm yourself, like into like I don't give a fuck of like what you are projecting, the performity of like what stereotype role of gender you're giving me. But like, you're also like the keeper of like all these women, like in the past and the present and also in the future. Like when you see little girls, I'm like, no, you have to like know how to say no. And if he's not saying like, he's not listening because like, oh, but it's love when he, you have to tell him, well, that is not love for me. And like, so you have to reaffirm and they have to start, like we have, like I, I didn't have a lot of those because yeah, I, I wasn't, I was like weird because I didn't have the face of like North American girl. But um, yeah, no, like it's, it's um, for me, it, that's my queerness, you know, like don't give a shit. The first thing you have to do is like to respect yourself. And if that person cannot respect you, you will get hurt. And sometimes I have the impression that the performativity of being a woman is upholding the, the face of not getting hurt. You know, like, you 
you have to be this beautiful girl, you have to perform, oh, it's just a joke. But like, no, it's okay. Like you can, like, you might be more queer, like, than you think when deep down you start realizing then, um, no, it's enough, you know, like, so, yeah, I don't know, that, that's, uh, and within my family being queer, well, I didn't really, it's more when I dress as like, when, when I dress like, uh, they don't give, like, they don't pass any comments or like, dress well, however you want. But the moment that I dress really like womanly, oh, the comments, I'm like, you know what? I think I'd rather like, change but at the same time it pisses me off because i'm like no i'm not going to change and my mom is so stupid my mom is always criticizing me on how i dress and every single time i have to tell her no it doesn't matter our generation and even if i'm much older than our generation you know <laughs> like i'm the one that's older just like i'm like a 15 year old right now so <laughs> that one is hard to to decolonize and so I guess I'm gonna have to just let it go and find another way to just like go with the flow but that's more difficult yeah but the queerness back yeah no I, in my family I'm happy maybe it's just like be whoever you want to be Mm -hmm. But know that like everybody will have their opinions and you, we can all agree to disagree. But in that sense, like no worries. Of course, some words, since they're used to it, it's still harmful words. Right. But once like you say you say something, it's like, oh, I didn't know. Like, um, it's not. But if I have like a member, like a trans woman that comes, well, I don't sometimes I'm like, oh, I don't want to do that word so I'll just like oh that's a girl because it's a girl you know like just go into it without being this like knowledge thing and like no no so just go with the flow and there's gonna be like <laughs> but yeah I, I focus my energies on like if there's a response there's a response I'm gonna be like no you know but or else I'll just go with normal life goes mm -hmm. but yeah my queerness is my strength I really like it I find it's dope I find I'm beautiful with my queerness mm -hmm. and even though it's like difficult in other ways that is something that I'm good I'm become I I feel I'm grateful that I did not go through others went through. When I hear some stories, I'm like, Oof. like more solidarity and empathy. But on that sense, I'm like, I'm all good. I can jam whatever I want and nobody's gonna piss me off. You know? Yeah, right. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you so much because um, I'm, I'm holding what you said about, you know, other people's perceptions, right? They, they don't come from us. I think, I think often I find that I have never had insecurities about my queerness until someone else was insecure about my queerness. Right? And, and, and then it's like, right. Um, what labor do you put into, uh, and who is deserving of, of the labor of, you know, of the response that they gave you, right? Because it's like, I never asked you to respond to me. See? <laughs> yeah, see. You know, so it's like, okay, well, why, why are you responding, right? Like, why, what, why did, what made you make that comment? And then it's always, it's always, I feel, uh, um, and what I'm hearing, right, as you speak is it's always a navigating, am I going to respond to that response, right? Um, yeah. How do I approach topics of queerness, of gender, um, and, and so what does it mean for you to simultaneously identify as Peruvian and queer? La huipala, my indigenous roots, because it's there. Mm -hmm. It's like it's referring to so many 
come indigenous roots, so many indigenous cultures, La Tierra, it is like reaffirming, like we're come, hello, Jacques, um, we've been through this. So I know I can like go through it too. And it's, yeah, definitely that. And the fact that here, since I was born and raised here, I come and at home, everything was okay with that. So when I was going at school or like just playing around with like neighbors, when I was kids and everything, we took up like the whole space, backyards and everything. Like it was always doing like what we love to play, Jacques, and it was everybody together. Like there was no, it's more like afterwards that these mentality of like, no, you know, like sex sexual ed, well, like, no, no, now we start differenti um, di differentiate, like, the el sexo. It, 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 so that's, that's what, like, changed a bit after. Like, because before those classes, we were all good. We were just, like, playing and stuff like that and just, like, answering back if something happened. But the fact that I came with other roots and other references and I was so well with that, like there wasn't a question when I was at home that made it easier. But it's definitely the home, La Tierra, Ripala, might come those roots that it's like, no, it's there and it's not moving. And it's been like, we've like, so this is done. This is not a topic that we're going to like, um, um, Okay, like um, move the earth for like no can't say so that's something that like grounds me the most of like being able like there's indigenous communities here also that have like these um uh, uh cultural references of the two spirit which is the integration of both right and the queerness is like the rejection they integrate and the north american um, perspective is like the rejection of but um so yeah I, I go into the in out a bit mm -hmm. so but I didn't know the indigenous people when I was young so really it's the that like across borders indigenous people from like my ancestry that made it possible because when since I was young I saw that and I didn't know exactly what it was but I know that with pride and everything, I'm like, well, there's something with the colors that makes it like for me associate and be like, yeah, fuck this, you know, like there's like everything's good. And that helped me a lot to go through like and to be well in that sense of my form of identity when I was growing up. So definitely. Yeah, that's really powerful. Um and and talking about how, you know, even your queerness, you see trace back to, to, to your indigenous roots. Um, so do you, do your identities coexist in the same spaces, do you feel? That I integrate them in the same spaces? Or do you feel like your queerness, your, your Peruvian identity, do they coexist, right? In the spaces oh. that you occupy, do you feel they coexist? Or if, or if they don't, you know, like, or do they overlap? Um. Oh, uh, I don't know. Probably, I've never noticed that. Um, I feel they coexist. Mm -hmm. um, I feel sometimes that they they have to overlap because I'm not like my roots are not from here. Mm -hmm. So, like when I'm into spaces. Um, of indigenous communities here, well, it's not the same. You know, there's another form of references still, even if they were like indigenous people, they're not homogenic. Like they, they had like their, they, they were the ones occupying, they had their own things, right? So there I see that I overlap. Then maybe it's more my uh, queerness that connects with two spirit people or it could be these roots of indigeneity that connects with more traditional like uh, uh, indigenous people mm -hmm. you know like the traditions but then the what is more like um, um, queer and gender 
then like also we have to discuss sometimes because it's not everybody that has been um, decolonizing because it's a decolonizing too, right? Colonialism is there to like trying to erase all of that, right? So it's a process to be respected mm -hmm. locally for the, so I guess it's really when I'm in those spaces or with BIPOC also like black and indigenous, uh, since I'm white passing also, when there's morenitas también, I have to like, because I don't know. So I have to like also accept that there is a difference. There's a, kind of a whole difference. When I see what my mom went through, I'm like, what the fuck, you know? <laughs> like, I was like, I would have been like smashing that fucking face. And she's like, no, no. Because like, she's living other forms of like, being like into their her space, which is completely different of me, you know, the capacities that I what I can do and everything. Mm -hmm. So when I'm into those spaces, there's always these overlapping of like which is going to help me, which references can help me at the first like uh, reaction, mm -hmm. let's say. Afterwards the humility um, and the respect would need to like come afterwards. But like, if I have to react quickly, like if I take up space or no space or like, how does this work? Um, that's the overlapping. Mm -hmm. But uh, when I'm just like chilling, dancing and everything, no, that too, I have to. Yeah, because sometimes there was like, more like wrong people that were looking at me. Ay, se si va el peruano, sabes el payaso. Siempre hay un payaso, ¿no? Que está ahí, que se burla de todo el mundo. <laughs> he was like, how come this white chick is dancing wailas mejor que otras personas, right? And he comes up to me and he's like, ¿de dónde vienes? And I was like, uh, uh, cambiándome. And I was like, yo soy la blanquita de la selva. And he's just started laughing because he didn't expect me like to, to answer that way. So then... Since he started laughing, he was like, okay, okay, respect, respect. But when I go into like, since I'm still white passing, like my dad is like from the North, right? From Spain, the colonial like settler in Peru. So like when, when there's like parties or stuff like that, and there's like brown really like that migrated and everything, not mixed and um, from uh, Peru, sometimes they look at me and like, of course she knows how to dance, <laughs> but we're all like super drunk. So it's like, yeah, well, first of all, the drunkenness. <laughs> and two, like I had to do a whole process to be able to go back to those steps. But that doesn't justify, you know, because it's still, because it's a performance, the first thing you see does count. Right. So that's why I'm like, when there's some dances, like when we dance all together, it's like, oh, the unification, the unified form of Peru, right? Depending on the values that we want to like show. But when we dance in parties, which is more intimate, then I know that like, well, I have to step out a bit to mm. like leave space and come, I will still dance, but I'm not going to perform as much as I need to perform to represent our community. You know, so like that also overlaps because there will be moves that I will be doing like in Afro Peruano and stuff like that, that sometimes with like other men, because when it's all men that are in the dance floors and the las chicas, then like when there's music, I really don't care who's on the dance floor, I'm gonna dance. <laughs> so that's my queerness thing. So like I will sometimes reproduce or sometimes I will also like produce the feminine type. Right. So it's all like also the overlapping or the, um, uh, what was the other word you were saying? I don't remember. Oh, I can hear you. Coexisting, can you hear me? Coexisting, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it overlaps every single time. Every mm -hmm. single time it does overlap. I guess I got used to in some spaces and in others I'm still learning, you know, like with respect and I will go to the point of not showing up if I don't know how to, like that's my anxiety disorder a bit. But for me, it's a form of respect that I will like support in other ways 
experience of being present, but right now I don't know how to deal with that because I don't know how like that's affecting myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense, I think. Um, And it's also okay. Right. I think that um, like, I don't think that we, we are constantly being like, Oh, are my identities coexisting in this space? Right. I think that we are constantly having to navigate um, how people are reading us what that means in terms of like the space we're taking up in the space that we're in. Um, and I think also when, when you are in an environment that you've, you've kind of been navigating for a little while, I think that you don't think about those things, right? I think it becomes such a natural process of, of moving about the world and moving with the people that you're around. So it makes sense. And, and thank you for sharing that. Um, we touched a little bit upon, you know, like what, um, maybe what folks, you know, folks go through in Peru when you shared that, right? Like the, that your experience has been, um, different because you, you grew up in, in, you know, you were born in Montreal, you grew up in Montreal. Um, but I'm wondering how, how do you feel Peruvians perceive queer folks? There's still a lot of machismo. Mm -hmm. That's definitely like, um, you really, there, there is the, there is that. When, you know, I, I can reference it more into like the, the dating, like a bit, like um, I can more talk about that through dating and arts. Mm-hmm. So like dancing and everything, I can refer to that. Um, it's really like automatic, right? Like, do they see you as a not feminine, enough to be able to like hacerte los ojos bonitos or is she too manly because she answered back mm-hmm. you know like that stereotype is really like present that's for sure I don't know if we say like a lot um, because I'm more like when that happens it affects me a bit more like I find it very it's taking up a lot of space when in reality it's not it's just like my traumatized brain that it's like oh you're like taking up a lot of space right now because for me it bothers me right because that's also like what pushed me into like reaffirming myself that it's okay to be who I am and that's it because of so many projections so yeah there is still a lot because they, they refer it to oh but it's like that or you're not Peruvian enough because you're answering back. Because if you go to Peru, it's like that. And I'm like, well, if you go to Peru, there's a lot of women also that will answer you back. Like Peruvian sisters in Peru are also very like active on that point. Like, no está pasando. Con tus hijos no te metas. It's like the whole movement that maybe you did not like listen to, you know? So yeah, it's like, being rejected into what is Peruvian. Rejected, uh, rejected from like what is Peruvian, like especially when you're not born in Peru. But um, yeah, so I guess, I guess because of my queerness also, I'm also like, you know what? I don't, I really don't care. I will answer you back. And I think that since I was born here and that like, it's already difficult for migrants to be able to like, live their life I find also as a white passing person it's our responsibility also to say something like you can like take that hit you know like you have more resources and everything because yeah you can take that hit so that's like the what um reinforced my queerness because I'm like well no, leave her time. She will be able to answer you back. That's for sure, Jacques. Like, um, yeah, I find it difficult. It takes up a lot of space. Mm-hmm. It's that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I hear that. Um, and I also think, right, like in terms of, well, I mean, what comes up for me, and, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, right, but it seems like the the taking up of space or even in the the rejection that you feel when you act um, in a way that that goes um, against like 
maybe someone's perception of what it means to be Peruvian, right? And, mm-hmm. and I, the perception that comes from folks of, of being Peruvian is is not is not queer. It's to be not feminine, right? It's to be not empowered. It is to be. It, it sounds like that, right? It sounds like that. That is what takes up space. Um, and so I, I imagine, right, and even in that, it, it can produce isolation, right, and, and and having to constantly and and exhaustion. Um, and so I'm, you know, like we know that you know, queer Peruvian and queer folks, trans folks, you know, um, like we experience disproportionate amounts of of harm and violence, right? Either either it comes from those perceptions, right? It comes from the exhaustion or it comes from very real violence enacted on our bodies, right? Often paying for it with our lives. Um, And so, you know, how, how do we as queer Peruvians, right? How do we survive this, this um, isolation, right? How do we survive this harm? How do we survive this violence? Wow, I don't have like an answer. I have possibilities, I guess, of how we can survive. Um, I'm still learning on that one of how to survive it as a queer Peruvian, Um, because you take it everywhere you go, or your thoughts are like, like you said, like, you don't even think about it, but you know, you know, you know who you are. Yeah, like, um, so it's always like confronting a situation where you just have to do, like, for me, it's instinct whatever your references are, sometimes you don't even realize the references that are so present. Mm -hmm. And I I think also it's very an academia um, perspective because it is not the same way to do so when you're in academia to be able to name it when I'm with some sisters that are, were like in the streets, like, and, and I'm like projecting maybe into a Mexicana or a Nureña or something like that, that are like fucking like, we're scrubbing toilets and stuff like that. And we're like, we are like, she does know in other words, but in, or in other means of like showing it, you know, but not being able to identify it. And that is, because being able to identify it, like I didn't understand why guys didn't like me. No, like I didn't understand why I was accepted at some parties to do some things. And in other parties, I wasn't invited, you know, for with specific roles. I was always like the homeboy, mm-hmm. like to have fun and stuff like that. But I was not invited to the parties where, where all the hot girls were. You know, so I was always like the second level, third, fourth, fifth, like, so I guess I can only understand now, like once I'm able like to go through everything that I went through to be able to like heal and be like, oh, it's okay. I was rejected. That's because like, I know who I was and like, I was sad, but like, I know that's it. So I was feeling very isolated, but like, for the rest part, I could do sports. I could just like laugh with people. I could like do so many things that didn't like put me in this box of just doing this, right? But the girls that were also just doing this, like like when we're like um, haciendo la limpieza or cosas así, they're also, you see sometimes that they're uncomfortable and I'm like, are you comfortable because of this? Like, and sometimes just asking the questions, just like throwing like a, a small, like a hint, mm-hmm. you see their faces completely change. They're exhausted because they keep on performing that within. So they have other means or other ways of being like able to identify it. But before that, I didn't understand. And it's only come recently that I could say like, oh, it's this, you know? But if I didn't do that work, I wouldn't know. Mm-hmm. I find it's, um, yeah, I can't wait for like 
more people at school to be able to be integrated because it's not something like it's something that harms people mm -hmm. it harms mm -hmm. there's an self-esteem it attacks everything on what you can do you can have access to better jobs you can have um, better ways to know your rights because like um, ways to like answer back and everything so it's just how to balance and how to be able to make it more accessible to those that don't have that, like they know, but can't like say it in the same ways that would be um, um, legit, yeah. you know? Like some ways are legit, other ways are not legit. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, we're both doing the same thing, <laughs> right? And it's like, we're both pissed at the same situation <laughs> so so yeah i think it's like it's um yeah i can if i like you would have asked me that question like a year or two ago i would not have been able to answer it mm -hmm. i would have been like i don't know what words to use but yeah definitely mm -hmm. yeah i and, and thank you, you know, for, for your, you know, radical honesty in that, because um, I think, you know, like you, I have also been thinking about this, this notion of, you know, communities having knowledge and what is valued in terms of, of that knowledge, right? Is, is that knowledge valuable? what, just because they can't articulate something, right? Or someone can't articulate something. And I also invite you, right, like in, in this, right, as we're, as we're having this conversation, that you don't have to be articulate here, right? Like that, mm -hmm. that you can, um, you can tell me, I don't know, that's a perfectly fine answer. You can- Okay, thank you. <laughs> you know, like, I haven't thought about that. And, and that's valid, right? Because it's like, I don't, I don't know if we're granted spaces where we're able to sit and think about these things. Um, and I also don't know if, if, you know, like you said, academia does a really good job in valuing when someone is articulate and when someone have the words to name something, right? And it's, and it's really like, who, who then has access to to um, to the tools to name their experience so that they they get you know what they need to meet their needs right like um, and that's so real and I and I also uh, um, appreciate you naming you know like a the shift that you've seen in yourself right because it's true like a year ago I think I wouldn't I wouldn't even have been able to ask these questions like <laughs> oh, there you go you're gonna have, you're you're a star. You got, you're gonna you're gonna do a hard work. Oh my god, you're doing the work. Oh my god. Yeah, but, but it's so real and and like um in in thinking about the performance that that I think the world expects from from queer folks, from queer Peruvians, from racialized bodies. Um right, we don't have to do that here. Like okay. you know, it's it's we don't, and I invite you to just, you know, like. To, we can let that go for for even in this moment, right? Um, um, but thank you, thank you, because because those possibilities, you know, in naming those possibilities, I think they they always generate radical potential, right? They always are generating, and even naming, you know, like maybe maybe we can do this, and starting to have those those thoughts, right? Um, it, can, it can really shift things. So thank you. Um, oh, I went through. I never understood when I was more like doing like work like in the streets. I come from like I'm I'm really like la estudiosa, you know. When everything was like crumbling down, it's just like sports and like studying. So I'm like, okay, you know what? I just like that's how I like um, I was able to go through it. I just did sports and studying and was with my friends at school, but then I had like to go to the hospital. Like the, the after school for me was going to the hospital or going to somewhere else or seeing my dad or taking care of my dad. So, siempre fui la estudiosa. Entonces, cuando llego, 
de golpe y porazo así, ¡pup!, en la calle, porque todo se, rum, se derrumbó alrededor mío, after my fucking ex, genre comme, I'm like, what the fuck, I didn't, I had so many, like, golpecitos, I like, what's happening, la estudiosa, ¿qué pasó?, like, <laughs> But it was like so fucking tough every single time. And they, they kept on telling me, ah, oh, you're the girl that went to school, you know, I'm the girl from academia and everything. What the fuck are you doing in the streets? And like, oh, I have, well, we're in the streets together, right? They always, always, I always had like this comeback of like, you're gonna have to let shit go because we're not talking with words here. We come, it's something else. So you mm -hmm. have to let that shit go it's, and I usually am from the academia of reading writing and everything and I'm like no but let's talk about this like what comes um, to, to try to understand things and everything to analyze and every single time that people I have learned so much from like street life they're my teachers seriously and like sometimes like not even like uh, sec uh, secondary like and they were just like no no like you're gonna have to listen to me right now okay and let that go like move on let that go because you won't make it so that's how i realized i was like okay well we all have like ways difference of like learning and like we all are all from like different points and we're all coming together so i was like well i need to let things go in that case because my traumas are just going to be more difficult but yeah it's not that's That's the hard knocked reality that I had also like the gratitude to be able to be with people on the streets where they were just like laughing at me and be like, oh, you find that rough? Like, I was like, it is rough. Like, I'm a young little estudiosa. <laughs> and they were like, no, bitch. Good luck. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> you know, like, fuck. But yeah, that's the, like, that's how I, I knew that I was like, okay, well, I have this queerness ideas from like these Judith Butler, French women and blah, blah, blah. But like in reality, like they're queerer than me. Like mm -hmm. the bros that come together, like, I'm like, do you know that the love you have for your bro is the gayest shit you have? And they're like, I'm not gay. I'm like, this is whatever, Joker. <laughs> do, do you know, Joker? So it's like different ways mm -hmm. of like showing things. So, yeah. Yeah, I got really like you have to let it go, bitch. There is not one like solution or one way to do something. Mm -hmm. I'm like, shit, <laughs> it would have been much easier, but I get it. <laughs> yeah, and and um, what a like, it's almost um a form of of holding yourself accountable, right? To, to uh -huh what you have what you thought you knew and suddenly you're in a different situation and and now all of these things you're learning are challenging you it sounds like you know and, and it's 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 such a process of holding yourself accountable um and and so thank you for that um I wonder if there are any other identities that are salient to you you know we've touched on on your queerness your Peruvianness um but if there are any other identities that you would like to share with me that feel salient to you Yeah, of course, like what I do for work, because that's a lot of like identity that I bring everywhere, uh, like work, no work, uh, like the caring parts of it, because I could have just been like a bad bitch and just be like, well, fuck you and always be fighting. But like this caring of like seeing, seeing it in a different perspective to be able like to, to continue like relationships to uphold those relationships that maybe we're not going to speak for a while but i don't want harm for this person you know and the working on the streets and everything that is like slash being come to the space slash what you're doing um it's like something also that it's impossible to not form you you know to not transform you because It's so interconnected with your body identity. And at the same time, you have to find like a shield that can like find ways to be able to like separate and to be able to let things go because you can be completely destroyed 
you know, like, and there's so many people completely destroyed that are still there, you know, like I have like a roof here, it's difficult with my mom, but I have a roof and food, you know, I had to leave quickly from the apartment where I was because there was like a lot of violence. And for me, I was like, well, if other people can deal with this, fine, but I can't. So like that took a lot of courage for me to like close that door and leave that apartment. But I was with no apartment where to go because like the street work is not something that people think that you can live by. You can't live from street work. You survive from street work. That is not the same. And that is where like this capitalist point of view where like if you're in the street, it's only surviving. Once you start living, you're gonna have to change the space. And I'm like, well, why? You know, like it's our streets. There's a problem if we cannot all share our streets. And if some people that are there for survivor kept on being pushed, you know, pushed or being in harm's way or stuff like that, because others find you disgusting because you're automatically disgusting. You're in the streets. The streets are dirty, you know? So it's like, for me, that was something that I reinforced my queerness there. And I was like, well, if some people find it sexy, good. If others don't, that is not my problem to not be in my way. Come, and I needed to, I learned it the very difficult way because in the streets, everybody can see where you're at. But when you're in the streets and you see people like driving by or passing by, too many faces and you still have no case. So you're just there and like going a bit crazy and trying to ground yourself and be able to make like that small shield where you have to let go and still be able to like appear like, like you have no choice to appear like a bitch. You have no choice. It's not something that I chose to be a bitch, you know, and that I chose to reaffirm it and to like come to appropriate it and to be comfortable with it because I want to say, I don't want another dude ass patriarchal fucking asshole that wants harm towards me to be telling me I'm a bitch. No, no, I know I'm a bitch and I'm going to tell you how bitch I am. I'm not going to be using your word, you know, and you have no choice. You have no choice. It's like that transformed me completely and that's why I think like the not a lot of Peruvians um I was really into the culture clashing so I was like one of the only Peruvians that I've met really on the streets Mm -hmm. um it was more uh BIPOC communities a lot of indigenous people I've been uh, I'm really really happy and grateful for that um and but like Peruvians or Latinos maybe it was the neighborhood where I was at but there wasn't a lot and I understand because it's it's um it's difficult and if there were there might have been more um uh how do you say it escondidas Mm -hmm. you know like to not be able to be seen or stuff like that so I was basically more seen I guess Mm -hmm. but like that is that that is the the hardest the most difficult phase I had to go through because now I'm so used to it and I'm so happy because I like cross paths with so many people and I'm if I see them again like in the streets in the parks and everything I'm like yeah you you know like but the small moments that might have been like a hour that we spoke and they're like, no, just you have to let it go. I already know where you come from. Like they're brilliant. And I get why they're like, we're, why we're always like chased away because we are brilliant. We, we know more the places than like the police because we, th- those are the last places where we can be outside without being like in, um, inside like our houses or stuff like that. So that's why also the police is always chasing us because we're the ones that are occupying the space, you know? Like, um, you cannot come and tell me, coming from your car, your um, guns and everything, you're not going to come and tell me what to do when you're just going to run 
not get paid and get away with everything because you are protected and have impunity. So come, there is something that like a brilliance. And I think that, yeah, like I, I think it's like always misrepresented. There's so many like prejudice. People always want to push us away. And I'm like, when you have nowhere to go and you're just like couch surfing or just like, enduring abuse in the apartment like I was enduring abuse I was like okay I cannot stand this this is really difficult until I just like you know what fuck this so um yeah a lot of props it is not a living to be in the streets it is a survival mode you are not being there you are barely eating you are barely come um, getting through and that's what like I really I really learned a lot and that also transformed all my identities of peruanas. So when there's uh, Latinas or, or people like that, that I see or BIPOCs, I'm always like, okay, well, I don't care if like, I'm the one that's doing the goonie, right? So I'll do the goonie. I really don't give a shit if that means that we can all be together instead of one being isolated in one space and another isolated, like if we can, I'll be together. I will come. I really don't give a shit. Like, I think that reaffirmed completely. And that's a major part of like transformative, like changes, like rooted. Because now if I go to Peru, everybody telling me like, oh, Peru, Peru esto, Peru lo otro, te vas a hacer asaltar ahí en la esquina, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, you know what? I think I'm ready to go to Peru. <laughs> como que se ensayen de asaltar, me van a ver como me voy a contestar, ¿sí? So I'm like, I guess that's also like what like brings me to like my Peruvian style, like of it, like of all the stories and everything. I had like people in my families, in my family also that got us um killed also like in street fights and stuff like that so so I'm like oh my god like I don't think like it is serious matters and we always have to be like prepared but I get when people are scared I get it but just like it has consequences sometimes a lot so yeah that's what a uh, it's a big part the street work is um props seriously it's like feminism or queerness especially in the caring side of like the the of the work it's a a revolution cannot be done without it without them without us without definitely i think it comes from there because the first people that will be affected like that will live the repercussions it's us so That's why, like, I like being in the streets. Sometimes it's difficult, like, when I try, like, to be with a guy or something like that. Because mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, I'm so not feminine. So <laughs> sometimes it hurts when, when I have a crush, it fucking hurts. I'm like, fuck. But I don't care. It's things that just go by. And, but yeah, I, I fell in love. I'm, uh, I fell in love with the street. And, like, yeah. It's a, uh, it's definitely queer affirming. Like if you're there, it's impossible for you to not to be queer. Like you can say all your like opinions and stuff like that. It's okay because like we've all done like harm, but like when you see the actions, mm. you're like, you're so fucking queer, you know? Um, it's like talk more about this, like in school everywhere and stop being like a moralistic taboo because seriously, um, If you're not queer in the streets, you won't survive either. Um, it's impossible. It's impossible. It's, um, you can't. You, you need that. It's that love that you like that you need. So yeah. <laughs> wow. I just, you know, I I'm really sitting with everything that you shared because um I, I think that, that you gave so much, uh, like truth, there was such truth in all of, all of what you shared in the sense that like, um, 
the streets, you know, are, are a tool for survival, but it's also even in that survival, it sounds like there's, there's care networks, right. That can push you beyond a survival mode. Right. And I Mm -hmm. think that there's so many things that folks do that help us survive. And yet in that, right, like how are we still caring for ourselves in survival? And that's, and that's so powerful and that's so beautiful. And, and yeah. there's knowledge, right? There's knowledge that comes from the streets. There is a strength that comes from the streets. Um, oh, yeah. You. Thank you. And, and you know, I do um, healing work that centers queer, trans, Black, Indigenous, people of color broadly. So I was trained in Black feminist methods. I was trained in healing justice, um, mm. tenets of healing justice. Um, and so I always get curious, right? Like how, how folks are centering their wellness and how, how they're viewing healing, how they are healing. Um, and so like, I have a few more questions before, you know, we've been talking for, for a little while and, and I'm... <laughs> Um, but you know, I just, I have a few questions that focus specifically on, on those aspects of, of wellness of healing. Um, okay. if that's okay. Um, of course. You know, if you need, if you need a break at all. Um, no, I'm, I'm okay. <laughs> Do you say if you want to you tell me. <laughs> um, okay. So what does wellness look like for you? What does wellness look? It's, um, Mostly for me would be a state of mind. Mm. When you have a peace with, uh, when you find like a, a peace from like, I'm an overthinker. So when I can find a peace of mind where I can laugh or not even just like stare at like, um, I, like I go to um, there's a um, the St. Lawrence River mm-hmm. like uh, like not even a block from from where I am so I'm really happy for that and I just go sit there and watch like the the water like go with the birds and when I can just like ignore everything in my mind and just like look. You know, like I don't even have to think about like, oh, the river is doing this or it's been contaminated by blah, 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 blah. No, I just, I just look and I just stare, you know, like with like no second, third, fourth uh, analytical aspect of it. Mm -hmm. That for me is like, well, wellness. Mm -hmm. When I'm able to find those moments Mm -hmm. in my chaotic situation and I'm able that's wellness mm-hmm. I don't want to always stay there like right. sometimes it's like bitch you have to move you can't be just staring at things you have like your life <laughs> you know like so, 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 stop staring and just like don't be numb with it you know but when you can like flow like in between those like chaotic moments and like um just of like resting, letting your mind rest and just like not like to slowly, because it took me years to slowly like less think, you know, when you're in that piece of wellness. Physically also, I'm diabetic. Uh, I've been really, really sick. I had a lot, a lot of stress and it affected my body. It's like my pancreas was like, bitch. I have warned you with your head because I had also alopecia, like hair, spots of hair. Oh, I had it so bad. I would look like a cancer patient in the streets. Took years and it was the violence from the police. Actually, when there was the SPVM, like I was really like a web a bit. Like, so when... There was moments where they surprised me, but they were all like, and like when I saw them, it affected my head. Like it, it didn't affect my body till like after, after. But like the first thing that affected was like my head. So my hair sometimes fall, like my head is really um, so sensible. You know, like it's, I won't let anybody, just anybody touch it. You know, like it's like, 
it's so fucked up. And so, yeah, I'm diabetic. So for me, physical wellness um, has been screwed over. You know, I was so into my head because it was affected more and everything that my body, when my body just shut down and I was in the hospital for like a week, I was like, why am I so long? And they're like, well, we have to change like your blood. Like they had to change my blood completely. Um, like I was, yeah. And now I have needles. So it's not just to pop a pill. <laughs> I was like, give me the pills. They were like, we can't give you pills. Like, will you come down? I'm like, no, give me the pills. I was like freaking out the worst experience ever the worst 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 because I was also since I'm an organizer because it was also police violence in my family um I'm a community organizer against police brutality so they know you and they will be the first one to be there to tell you that they know we know they know yes. you know so that affected a lot in the stress because all of a sudden it's like, poof, like, why, why are you trying to organize something, you know? So it's like, it was like a complete shock. So they tried to trap me also, like in different ways also, like to be able to say bad things because when I had a bad day, um, they suddenly were there present in my um, way and they were looking everybody around me so I was like, I'm not asking you, you are come surveilling me and you're profiling everybody that is around me because they were even following me with like things and charts to like write down. So it was really intense. So wow. on one side, I was like, okay, I know I'm, not, I'm doing a good job. And secondly, I know that there is a lot of people that think alike because if you are taking notes of people that are around me, that is because you are the one failing, not us. But like, it's difficult to maintain that when you're a girl and it's always SPVM men, tall, big men that are always there around you. So it was like, for me, the first responsible in rape culture is the police. You know, they don't, they gaslight you. They will invent the story they want. Um, you do not give them consent for more information. You can't even call them for help because once you call them for help, they will be asking you questions about who is around you. And you're not given consent about that, but they're pressuring you. So when I had a huge entrapment deal with them that they tried to, to get me, mm -hmm. I was like, oh my God, I'm going to jail for five years. <laughs> but at the same time, I was super calm. Well, I know I'm gonna make friends there too. I know already that this situation, the ones that will be more harmful will be the correctional officers. You know, like what's gonna change? The only thing that's gonna change is that they're just going to be more focused on me to like pinpoint, but I know that I will be well surrounded. We're gonna have our issues and everything, but like I wasn't stressed. I was just like, fuck, another five years, I'm gonna get fucked good, you know? Like, and I didn't have any boyfriend that could like it. I was like, oh my God, am I going to jail or not? But after that, like not even a month after, straight to the hospital. That's when I got the, di the, the diabetes where the doctors were like, no bitch, come, you live through something that just like shut you down. You come, so I'm happy I didn't go to jail because imagine going to jail mm -hmm. and starting to be a diabetic with injections, I would have like probably be dead because at least outside of jail, I was like, I had an apartment. I was able like to adapt of like what I'm eating and my injections and everything. I was like, fuck. But my physical health was really affected. Yeah. And in being in like doing the sex, uh, the street work um, was so much cooler than the life come before that. Mm -hmm. Like there was something, maybe it's because yeah, I'm more like a analytical, more like a overthinker and stuff like that. But whew, my physical health is the one that is mostly rushing. Mm -hmm. 
because I'm looking into going like to get a massage for like lymphatic for the limb or something like that. Yeah, and it's like uh, yeah, okay, and it's for the blood and all mm -hmm. the toxins that you can like have in your system and everything. I think like usually I would have been oh yeah massage, but now I'm thinking my physical health yeah. and my yeah. well wellness in another way you know like I know it's probably not the most popular but I know that my body needs it because of the like the measurements and I know it's all in me and everything so that's that's the most difficult part so I'm trying to, to find balance with like I've started like doing some uh, um, martial arts trainings but well, I'm saying that as if I was like already a pro but I just like won and I'm like I fell in love with it <laughs> but I want to continue and so because I really like it and so I'm trying to with that and dancing it's been a long time I haven't danced because there's yeah I'm like a bit slow on that one but um my physical wellness is I, I figured out that what I wanted from, like, if I'm in a relationship or not, like, if you cannot give hugs, baby, bye-bye. Genre, um, it's been, like, I, I, like, my physical health definitely needs that with my anxieties and everything. Yeah, like, I'm at that point where at least in my physical health, I know what I want and I don't, and what I don't want, you know. I guess that's the positive thing with all the, because it's been like going so down with that, that that part I'm, I'm happy that I've finally realized, you know, I'm quicker of just being like, well, you can't help with my, that part of my physical health, then I guess I'm gonna have to go and get it elsewhere, you know? Yeah. But yeah, thank you for, for sharing that with me. Um, and um, I, there is definitely, um, right, we see the effects that, that issues of surveillance, of policing, whether that comes directly from the police, and in your case, it did, right? And uh, we see the effects that that has on our body and on our mind, on our spirit. Um, and, you know, and I, I wish you the most wellness when it comes when it comes you know to to that um because yes yes orgasm um you know as much as we would want otherwise the police is a very real power in society in communities Right. And there's work being done against. Right. There's abolitionists doing work. You know, you you do work as an as an organizer. Right. You do work on the streets. There's care networks that like there's ways that we are working against. You know, okay. police and, and these these um, powers that that only seek to to harm us. Right. And 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 direct violence towards us. Um, yeah. And, and so I think wellness, you know, like you said, it, it is so important um, as, as we navigate that. And, and so um, uh, what about healing? Like, you know, you named wellness, you named these, these aspects. What about healing for you? Healing, I find it more in the long-term. Okay. Healing, I, I see it more as a long-term of like those shifting perspectives. That for me is healing. Like the wellness could be like sp sporadic, like in the moment, sometimes a few months, but the healing part, sometimes we never heal, you know? Sometimes like we know it's there, but we don't shift the energies, you know? So for me, healing is really like a long-term, a slow movement of like transformative, like, living beings and stuff like that um yeah I think I'm at that point mm -hmm. I, I don't know what to to say more but that's perfect that <laughs> healing perspective of letting go mm -hmm. of like yeah. saying of shifting the letting go faces that 
sometimes I guess I'm into a phase of healing right now. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate that. Um, and I just have a few more questions, you know, before sure. um, if you would, uh, if you're still good to, to continue. Um, of course. So uh, what does community look like for you? You've named the care networks, right? You've named, and, and even in the beginning, I remember you saying, right, like shifting to um, these queer families, right? These queer houses. Um, I'm wondering if you would like to expand a little bit more on, on community and the role it has on your life. Yeah, community. I cannot live without community. Maybe some can, but I've seen how it affected me. And it's, I need to. Like, I will try, fail, but I, I need to form community with other people. Um, even if it's like, that's why I like talking to you. I'm like, we're not next to each other. You're like in Florida, I'm like in Montreal, but like, for me, there's a community, like using also those like uh, tools, those internet tools that have like con bad consequences, but also have like a lot of beautiful potentials mm -hmm. of like, for me, that feels like I can go out and continue my day happy, you know? Cause I know that there's a community. I know I'm not alone. There's no borders in the, in the form of community. There, there cannot be borders. There cannot be like these barriers to form a community. The moment that there is a barrier, and I'm not saying um, because a community can be formed like uh, specifically the identity wise of like being queer, right? But that's a community, but we don't put borders like that says, oh, well, I've proven with, um, X criteria that I am, you know, like it's for me, it's like fluid knowing that you're not alone. Like, so if you can build sometimes when we're isolated and we're trying to like, we're building it, it's, it's like so vast and the possibilities are so vast. And it's a form also of coming together saying, well, we're not all homogenic. We're not all equal, but with, in this regard, like we will, hold each other, you know, we will hold space. For me, that's community. And to be like able to have that safer space. If a community is not a safer space, and safer space for me is not necessarily saying there's no harm done. Mm -hmm. It's also the accountability that you were saying earlier, you know, that accountability means so much. Yeah. So, so it transforms, it transforms, it, it, it's, it's nothing. But at the same time, if you say, oh my bad or like I'm like oh I didn't know like I will do better that changes just those small words like and to be able to like have the um, self-confidence also to like to call out and to be like well no don't talk to me like that that is also like a safer space mm -hmm. because there will be conflicts but that means that those conflicts will not be punishable they will be only like well, dude, conversation, like, what's up, you know? Like, so for me, that is community. When there is regards of punishing and stuff like that, when it goes beyond in our own communities, sometimes there's also like sexual violence or stuff like that. When we're able to come together and like talk and be like, well, we're gonna have to like modify the space a bit. And we're able together to be able to talk about it since well, many times it's like the first time, right? Because everybody brings in new perspectives. Well, that also, it's safer for the victim to be able like to come together and be like, okay, well, together we've decided that like with the victim that you need to be accountable in this form, you know? You won't go to jail, You're not learning anything in jail. That's not rehabilitation. It's bullshit. It's just to make it worse, you know, mm -hmm. so like to form a, a community where you can be accountable in so many ways and to like immediately have like a first response of like holding space to be safer. That for me is community. Mm -hmm. Like nobody's perfect. I'm not perfect. I've done all the sexist, racist, homophobic commentaries too. I went through that, you know, so 
we grow up with school like that. We grow up with that in our culture. So to be able also to say that humbly, like, oh yeah, I went through that. Come let it go. We have to change. You know, come. That is community for me. Yeah, powerful. So powerful, right? Um, I think that I I definitely relate to to a lot of what you shared about community, especially in like accountability, right, and safety and what that means, right? Because I think community. Mm -hmm community gets to decide what that looks like right and See? that is so powerful right the exactly get to decide what that looks like for us right like mm -hmm. we get to do it and that's that's so powerful um, somebody that comes outside from our community to come and tell us how to like no that is not community no that's not right that, See? That's not. exactly uh what about pleasure does that come up pleasure when you oh pleasure identity. Oh, I've went so much bullshit. I'm having so much pleasure now with you talking. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity, also this space. Oh my God, it's, it's so wonderful to be come to share and to connect with others. Thank you. Um, this is pleasurable. I'm I love glad. it. I'm glad. <laughs> pleasurable. I come love it. I feel good. I'm excited. I'm not like morally depressed. I'm going to be doing jokes after. I'm like, this is a good day. I'm glad. This is pleasure. Right? That's, that's so queer. I like it. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm glad, right? And that gives me pleasure. It gives me pleasure to, to know that, that this experience, you know, feels good for you, right? Because it's like, you know, why, why are we going to, you know, we, we go through so much. Right. And, and you have shared, right. You have, you shared what you've gone through. And so why, why can't we make space for pleasure in our lives? Right. Like, like to me, to me, that's so important. Um, oh yeah. I've almost died. So like now it was like, like difficult to find the like pleasure because I was like, is this only going to be like groundhog day every single year of my life? But to find like pleasure in the small things. Like sometimes I'm like laughing alone in the streets because I saw something funny, you know? Some people are gonna be like behind their masks. Oh no, I can't laugh, I'm gonna look like a fool. I'm just that bitch in the corner of the street being like, ah! you know? like what the fuck? And me screaming or whatever. Like that is pleasurable for me to have no um, barriers. Like, yeah. That is pleasure. I've shifted. Like there's sex and there's pleasure and there's orgasms and there's like laughing with the good hormones going on. Oh yeah, yeah. definitely. More of that, right? Like, like <laughs> especially in our days, like what the fuck we can't even like move. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah. yes, absolutely. Okay, so two more questions and then we're wrapping. Yeah. But what do you wish for yourself? I wish happiness, but not only for myself, that's the thing. I find it like a big egocentric narcissist mm -hmm. because I'm going to wish me happiness, but I want to be surrounded by people that are happy. You know, like I want to see others that I've seen before that were unhappy. I want to see them happy. Like I want it to be contagious. Like I want mm -hmm. to be able to like, yeah do that let go easier like to not be like heavy and to find that happiness because i'm uh, this was hard this was hard to get here so yeah i want happiness i really don't care if i find a new apartment because i'm back at my mom's house so if when I find a new apartment, I really don't care if the only thing I have is a kitchen, a fridge, and a mattress. I really don't care if it's on the floor. Like, I don't care. I will have space. I will find space to dance. I, so, yeah, radio. <laughs> I need a radio. <laughs> I really don't care. The rest, I don't care. Like, money is an issue, but money goes, like goes in and out right but yeah I need to find happiness and like so 
the simplest things. Yeah, I love that. I mean, you know, and, and speaking to your point about, you know, wishing for others, my last question is, you know, what about for queer Peruvians? What do you wish? For, for the queer Peruvians? Speak up. Mm-hmm. Speak up. There is much more than just us. Mm-hmm. There's so many more. Mm-hmm. And we're all so silent about it. There was like the community, uh, Peruvian communities here have been like on and off, like through like generations, like speaking a bit up, organizing and stuff like that. Now it's again in another phase of like taking a bit more space and commun- com- um, organizing in uh, solidarity with people in Peru right now that are uh, in the elections, right? With all the Keiko, Castillo and everything. It's much more than that in life for the queer Peruvians. Mm-hmm. But with Con Mi Hijo No Te Metas, there wasn't anything that was happening. But everybody like was like talking a bit about it. Like we, everybody was like, I don't quite understand what's happening here. Like, well, I don't get it either. And we didn't come together to speak about it unless we were in our families and stuff like that. We're like, what is happening with that, you know? But like more broadly with the diaspora for queer, like to be able to gather around to have those conversations. It's uh, what I'm living is that I'm like meeting new people and talking about it with the people also through the people with who I danced and stuff like that. So we're like seeing each other again, talking a bit more of like what's happening. And yeah, it's something that needs to be um, also like pushed uh, forward, you know? Even if we, we're not perfect, nobody's perfect, we're all fucked up. In Peru, they're all so fucked up and it's crazy, but like something is happening and they definitely need, because almost all of my family like doesn't live in Peru. Yeah. Like it's my mother's generation, like two, three brothers, sisters that are living there and her friends. So like my cousins and everybody, we all like spread around the world. Mm-hmm. So it's like, we do exist, we're there and we keep on like ha- like calling and looking at what's happening and La Madre Tierra and everything. So like, we, we are connected. It's just, it's difficult to balance, I guess, all those realities and all those identities. But yeah, speak up, speak up, speak up because every single time we hear about Peru, here in the news, it's not about the elections. When we hear about Peru, it's about, um, or like mines or stuff like that, like um, la minerías. it's about the tourism. When, I, when we talk about Peru, it's like, oh, how beautiful the, um, the, it's uh, the Cusco Machu Picchu, que es una de las siete maravillas del mundo, con UNESCO y todo eso. Um, Peru is not just like, tourism like it's beautiful yes but like behind it there's like a massacre that is happening there you come dictatorships were there like our families are not there anymore like we spread out like there's reasons why this is happening so when we talk we talk about colombia we talk about chile we talk about bolivia for indigenous people but peru is always the tourism happy peru you know, and I'm like, let's get dirty. Like nobody has the perfect answer, but like yeah. it's struggling right now. If we let them, like it's gonna be worse. Like also, I don't remember how many times, but it's always like, which one is the um, biggest, the world's biggest um, uh, coca uh, productor? Peru is like always oh, one, two, mm-hmm. one, two, like with Colombia and everything. And right now, Colombia está yendo mal. Pues es Peru. <laughs> so like, can we talk about it? And that's an indigenous struggle. That's yeah. like, de la tierra. Es una planta que es sana, de curandera. Like, if you do not have access to those leaves, you must go to Big Pharma. Mm-hmm. To go to those spaces, indigenous, like in the mountains, and the mm-hmm. most rooted spaces, like in la tierra. So like, can we like... Like there's a problem. So yeah, I can't wait to like find people here like that would like like to, 
to wet themselves. I don't know if you say that, but to wet themselves and talk about that because it's like, what is happening? That is directly a plant from like ancestral medicine, like that is all over the place. So like, okay, something is happening. Like, can we like stop seeing it always like as a threat? Because right now, con los narcotraficantes and the assassination that has been in El Vaim, uh, ultimately, mm -hmm. it's chaotic because every single time we start talking about it, it's an election time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're like, well, something's happening. Yeah. If when we get to election time, it's the only time we talk about it, like publicly. Like there's come so yeah, and it's directly for me. Like you don't have access to go in like sin sin el sorroche to go into the mountains if you don't like drink a cup of coca. You know, like there's there's something completely disconnected. It's like oh, but now they're selling the pills. You can go with the pills. I'm like I don't want the pills. I want the herb. I'm going into like the nature. <laughs> like what the fuck? What is going on? <laughs> so yeah, nobody has a perfect answer, but like we're gonna meet so much. I'm sure of it that we're gonna meet also so much people like sharing, like community sharing, or like near same queerness, uh, like identities and stuff like that because it's always there. It's always when it's the most harmful and they're always like bashing us. That's when you start discovering, damn, it's because that's the source, you know, that's like a, a source of like why we cannot, we have difficulty of being well and we're not being attacked with con mis hijos no te metas. Um, there's a disconnect. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's what I, that's where I'm at. We're, we are at, <laughs> we're talking about it. <laughs> Thank you for, for naming that right. And, and I think that, you know, we can wish, um, and like you said, right, this happiness for, for yourself, for ourselves and for others. And there's also a piece of, right, going back to that accountability of our communities, right, um, of to have those conversations, to be able to say, uh, right. And, and I think that in, in starting to, and even naming that as a need, right, naming that as a need, um, I really think that there's potential to shift, right? Um, Dang. Absolutely, yeah. Just like, yeah, just naming it, then you will come, we think about it. It's like a seeds that we're like putting and it's maybe not gonna be in our generation, although I wish, from another generation that like are gonna know better than us and we're gonna be the old grannies. And we're gonna be like, fuck this, I can't like, <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah i want it to be better i really do it's like it's yeah 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 <laughs> you know it's so real um you know is is there anything else you would want to share with me um before we we officially wrap Thank you so much for doing this project because you have no idea what it means to go through this process of trying to like, not only doing the work locally, but locally and like to be able to see that the possibilities that are everywhere to be able to connect with everybody and to see like what brings us together and that it's not just like the generation that migrated, but it's so many gen to include me, I feel like you have no idea what it means because everything that is being done in any generation is for the well, Come, it's for the good of our like, I don't like saying lineage because sometimes it refers to like blood and everything, but it's broader, it's culture, it's how we hold it tight. It's how we can transmit it. It's how you let people fall in love with each other to be like, oh, we've all went through this. Okay, we've been through that. Oh, damn bitch, I didn't know that's how it goes in Montreal. Like to broaden possibilities right now where it's like an unstable world everywhere. Like no borders, like we have to share this to be able also like to just be like 
proud of where we come from, especially as queer, like, um, the job is being done and sometimes it's like, it, we don't see it. So thank you so much. You have no idea, Maria, como lo siento, en serio. Thank you. Thank you. I can't wait to like listen to other people. I'm like, oh my God. I mean, I, I, you know, I don't take what you shared lightly, you know, and, and I don't take, I don't think, you know, I'm sitting in academia, but to hear someone's story, it's, it's beyond, you know, being intellectual about it. Like how, sí. you know, that, that is so, so powerful. Um, I, I, you know, I, I'm grateful to have the, to have Zoom, to have the technology, to be able to have these conversations. You know, I'm in Florida, you're in Montreal. Um, and also I know that, you know, that, that allows us to get a little closer to like one day being together in person, you know, like. Oh my God. If when I know that when it's going to be all like, if there's a ceremony or something like that, I'm going to be like going to Florida. <laughs> I'm a star there. <laughs> I'm gonna meet uh, the constellation. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, no, yes. Oh my god, it brings us closer. It really does, and and I, I really believe in in the power of storytelling. Um, it's also why I'm archiving because you know, like you said, maybe our generation doesn't see it right, but like maybe, and, and I agree with you on lineage. I also don't like to use a lineage, but you know, like the fan, like where we our roots where they where they go okay um, i i love to think of like people that are coming after us in in our families and our friendships and the relationships that we have that one day are going to listen right that maybe and they're like oh my gosh right in like 2021 they were talking about queerness and peruvianness and here i am right like this is this is where we are now and i think that's also something that's really powerful um and so, yeah, I'm so grateful. I am so, so grateful. Sina, thank you. Yeah, of course. I'm going to uh, stop the recording officially.